show. I'm Manny. I'm Terrence. And uh, special thanks to uh, our good buddy Art for yeah. filling in for me one more time. Once again. Once, once again. again. Well, gee, let me see. Uh, my son's birthday. Mm -hmm. Or hang out with you. Hang out with me. No, my son's birthday. Oh, he'll, he will have another birthday. <laughs> he will have tons of birthday. It's always better to hang out with. Regardless, you did great. You did great, Art. So we really, really appreciate it. Uh, got a little something special for you a little bit later, but we'll we'll get into that later. Right. So here are the goods. Box office, nonstop. I already freaking knew it was gonna happen. Wonder Woman cleaned house. Yes. And made history as uh, the first female-led uh, superhero movie. Uh huh. And girls a hundred million dollars in three days. I mean, this. I mean, what do we prefer? Because. Catwoman counts. That's a woman-led superhero movie. And made nothing. Supergirl. Oh, okay. So it had to hit all of those. That's to be right. The first. Okay. Well, because it did all those things, that made it the first. That's right. <laughs> the first female-led. Superhero. Okay. Let me say it again. The first female-led superhero movie that made a hundred million dollars. Okay. There you go. Which I think I just said that, but. All right. I didn't sound that way. You suck. All right. Anyway, <laughs> can, 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 can we uh, can we adjust for Supergirl? I mean, I mean, five dollars today. I mean, it's like five dollars today. We can hold twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it made 100 million domestic, 122 overseas for a, a worldwide total of 220 million, 20, two, over 220 million dollars. That and now I wonder, because we talked about like uh, you know summer movies kind of feeding on themselves. Would this movie had made more money if it had come out like in July or August? You know what? To be honest mm -hmm. with you, uh, because everybody now it, we're gonna have mm -hmm. to see uh, as far as uh, Spider-Man does, mm -hmm. but. Fourth of July, you know, everybody's out. Then mm -hmm. you're really watching movies. They're and they missed about, Memorial Day. They didn't get a Memorial yeah, Day. Yeah, they didn't man. get a Memorial Day, which, you know what? They thought Baywatch was going to do something mm -hmm. with, with Memorial Day weekend and Pirates. And I'm still not for you, Baywatch. <laughs> we'll get back to that in a minute. All right, anyway, um, now a majority of this, uh, it, was, it was interesting about it, was $93 million of this worldwide mm -hmm. total was from 3D. Really? Yeah, no, I don't think that movie needed 93 3D. Mil yeah, 93 million dollars. The, the 3D market. You know what it did? When you think about like her deflecting bullets and stuff when they had the whole battlefield scene with the trailers. The battlefield scene <laughs> or just the whole the, all the, the matrix scene. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, the 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 the, mascara, uh, the island thing uh, um, th those scenes uh, when they were doing 300. Um, <laughs> so those scenes probably the matrix. Yeah, basically uh, those scenes were probably really cool in 3D, but other than that, I mean when she actually got back to this to uh, England I was like, there was really, oh, the battle scene. But, I mean, outside of that, there wasn't really anything much for 3D. Well, either way, 93 million uh, out of the two, 200 plus was was uh, was 3D. So that's pretty damn good. There you know, go. Now you can see a bunch awesome. of 3D movies now. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, number two, Captain Underpants premiered, which uh, not too bad of a of a start for for. Uh, um, for this animated, you know, with the Wonder Woman out, it was pretty good. I heard it was pretty funny, actually. And uh, you'll actually have a new appreciation for Kevin Hart. He's in this movie. <laughs> He's in this movie. You know, I'm glad I didn't see this movie. I'm glad I didn't. You know what? Secret Life of Pets. It was, it was really cool. Kevin Hart's in that movie. So I was... If, he, if he's only funny to me in animated as, as films, a yeah. No, if he's only funny to me in as uh, as uh, voiceovers, then I I will find I will love his career. But well, well, you in got, actual comedy. <laughs> well, you got kids, so you won't watch it anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna, watch it. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, anyway. probably next week. Pirates, <laughs> uh, pirates dropped sixty five percent. Uh, for twenty one million uh, to take the number three spot, mm -hmm. is this franchise dead? It was dead two sh two movies ago. <laughs> Apparently not. I mean, it's 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 making money, but that that's a pretty steep drop. I think, in all honesty, Johnny Depp is not enough to pull people in anymore. Hey, I read in the freaking uh, in tabloids, which you know, the Inquirer, whatever, but that he lost two hundred million. Do you believe that? He's getting divorced. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> he's going to lose a lot of money. <laughs> Give me half, Andy. <laughs> anyway, number four, Guardian, still in it uh, with nine million. And cool. um, at least they're still in it. They didn't get kicked out by Wonder Woman, so. And uh, rounding out top five, your 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 favorite movie right now is Baywatch. Just keep hanging in there, Baywatch. You just like like Hercules. Watch, did. Watching Bay. Yeah, yeah. man. Just like Hercules did. Just hung around, made some money overseas. It's and not even doing crap overseas right now, dude. This is legitimately because they the don't... Rock's first bomb since Wait. Doom. Wait till it gets to Germany, where they love the Hass, the Hasselhoff. When it gets over there, it's gonna blow up. <laughs> it's gonna, I mean, because he's in the movie. So when it gets over there, hey, the Hobson, the Hobson Guardians. We are Groot. Remember at the end for the post-credit scenes. Alrighty, never mind. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally forgot about that. 
<laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's 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 like freaking hanging on by a damn thread. Sorry, Rock. I love you, Alexander and Dario. You know I love it's, you. This is probably its last week because it's, uh, it's, you know it's still getting greenlit for a fucking second one. It shouldn't be. That's a good movie. It's a good movie. Anyway, it's all right. Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> uh, next week, uh, the Dark Universe starts, right. and the Mummy, not Brendan Fraser. Yep, <laughs> the Mummy, Tom Cruise Mummy is I coming like out. Uh, I like, the, I like Brendan <laughs> Fraser. Bedazzled, man. One of my favorite uh, But yeah, Mummy starts, and um, so does It Comes at Night. Which, if you guys have not seen this trailer, it's not. very disturbing, and uh, it looks like it's probably going to be another another hit for uh, for freaking A24, man. They're 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 putting out some really good solid horror, and uh, um, it looks really good. It looks really cool. I need to watch the trailer because I have you guys to check out the trailer, man. Yeah. It's freaking it's freaking creepy. Um, for those of you that uh, that uh, like um, like war movies and based on true stories, uh, this one Megan Levy is uh, going to come out also this week, and it's um, it's it's a military. Uh, it, it's like Max. Have you ever seen that movie Max with the military canines? The dog. Yeah, yeah the dog. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what Megan Levy Levy's about. It's it's like her um, her connection to the dog after they get like blown up together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. blown up together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I I didn't remember the title for this film because I remember when I actually saw the trailer. I was like, thank you for showing me the whole movie. Because now I don't have to go see it. <laughs> because they show you the whole movie in the trailer. They show it, it's like, oh, she, she goes into the military. Oh, and like, oh, she gets this dog that nobody can train. And then she goes, they do bomb searches and stuff like that. And then they blow up. And then she goes home. And then she asks to get the dog back. And then it, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm telling you the trailer. She asks to get the dog back. And then she goes to court. And I was like, what the hell am I watching now? You, you show me the whole movie. The whole movie, except that's the only thing they didn't show me was the credits. But they didn't show the, they, they didn't show the fetch scene where she. Oh, there them. you go, there you go. I, I, I let's pay ten bucks a ticket for that. To watch, to watch them fetch the, forget it. All right. Well, with the success of Wonder Woman uh, this um, this past weekend and the awesome score for you know break out the party hats DC because you got ninety three on Rotten Tomatoes. Which Usually one? it's the other way around. Thirty nine. Yeah. <laughs> What is it? Uh, like, uh, uh, Man of Steel is like in the 50s or something like that. And, uh, I'm still upset about Turtles. Uh, yeah, no, it's crazy. Um, uh, Man of Steel is like in the 50s and Suicide Squad's in the 20s and BBS is in, or like... What's so combine all those together, oh, yeah, you, you, got, you got one of them. <laughs> How does she beat all of them? It's crazy. You know why? Because it was a good film. It yeah. was a good film. And she mm -hmm. actually was the bright spot in BBS, in my opinion. Well, I mean, her, I mean, better her five minutes of film. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, after the successful weekend, it's no surprise they're gonna make a second one. Of course. Uh, now it hasn't been officially greenlit, but with the way the track record is going as far as uh, box office, it's gonna, it's gonna definitely get greenlit for a, uh, for a second one. Yeah, give me Cheetah. Give both, me Cheetah as a video. Both Gal Gadot <laughs> and director Patty Jenkins will return. Okay. Um, even though the director uh, Patty Jenkins is not uh, thrilled about feeling obligated to direct the sequel. Well, it's because people kind of want to keep seeing the same vision. She, I mean, she shouldn't have to feel. I mean, plenty of sequels go on, get made by other directors. I mean, look at Aliens. <laughs> but how about this? Um, don't sign the contract. <laughs> oh, they made her sign a contract to do multiple. Yes, oh, then it's that's your fault. <laughs> I'm complaining about. Oh, I want to have to do the second film, even though I signed it because they made me all this money offer to do the second film. Exactly. Now, most of the <sighs> most of the uh, movie in uh, part one actually takes place in. Um, them, th how do you say it? Themyscira? Did I say that right? Themyscira. Themyscira. So it takes place in Themyscira or the Mascara or whatever. The Mascara. The Mascara, yeah. <laughs> it takes place there. It takes place in London. And then, um, and then it takes place in Paris. Right. So they're looking at part one to t uh, part two to take place in America, period. Now, are okay. they going to go the Winter Soldier route? And uh, well, put her we already did. You did first Avenger, so what? they might as well do Winter Soldier. <laughs> but yeah, but put her in, uh, put her in that kind of. Yeah, that's true. Think about it. It went from Avengers to Winter Soldier, so this is going to go from Wonder Woman to Justice League to Wonder Woman to the Winter Soldier. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so there you go. So there you go. So that's your formula, DC. That's how you make it work. Copy Marvel. Co no. <laughs> Well, this is, from what I understand, and you've seen it, so you tell me if I'm wrong, is that this is actually a little better than some of the Marvel movies. Uh, I mean, it depends on what Marvel movies we're talking about. Well, it, it, I, I had an argument with somebody today at work, and they were talking about, I like this better than Captain America the First Avenger, and I was like, you shut your mouth. <laughs> I, I'll probably agree with that. Ah, I haven't even seen the damn movie, and I can agree ah, I, I didn't like, like, not, like, I like the teaser poster of, of the First Avenger more than the movie. 
Seriously. Cat, cat fan here. Iron fan. <laughs> Civil War. Uh, <laughs> so what do you want to see in part two? What do you uh, see? Like I said, I, I, the villain I want to see is uh, Cheetah. I mean, because that's probably her most well-known villain in her comic, if you're not a big Wonder Woman fan. I mean, because they, they've already done Ares now, so, I mean, what else is there? <laughs> well, um, uh, one thing is for sure that uh, Gal Gadot is really, really aiming for um, uh, Halle Berry to be her love interest. I'm, 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 I'm down for it. Uh, you know what? We have a previous show. Yeah, please. 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 If, if, if I can sign a petition to make this happen, <laughs> send it on over to me. Send it to the goods. Oh, man. At Gmail. <laughs> uh, Pat, Patty Jenkins, has uh, uh, the director of Wonder Woman, has uh, broken, uh, broken the record mm -hmm. for the highest grossing debut of a female director, uh, uh, breaking Sam Taylor Johnson's uh, record of $85 million, uh, with Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay, so she, so uh, Patty Jenkins has already broken that record. She is now officially the number one. Okay, you know, which is, you know, it's it's breaking out. I mean, you got um, um, Jordan Peele, who's mm -hmm. the first African American to have a hundred million dollar debut with Get Out. I finally saw it. Uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> and, and now Patty Jenkins. So it's pretty. It's, it's, filmmaking is is really it's really going in the in the right direction right now. Catherine, do Bigel. we do we give them credit though? Because both of those franchises were films that they had huge fan bases and the people were like, wait, what? Which? Oh, the Fifty like, Shades. Fifty Shades and Wonder. Like people have been waiting on Wonder Woman for seventy years. Um, people have been waiting on Fifty Shades of Grey since the books were selling millions and millions of copies. Right. So just to see it on films, those movies were really gonna do well. Right. I mean, so do we give them all the credit or do we do that? They finally got around to doing something and and basically uh, giving the fans what they really wanted. I think mm -hmm. they executed the content right. Okay. More Patty Jenkins than Taylor I guess you could say the same thing. Sam like, Johnson because because people want to see Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad two, and then that didn't do so well. <laughs> oh the, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Though this didn't beat Suicide Squad, right? No, right now, no. No, okay. No. Mm -hmm. uh, Suicide Squad. Well, no, BBS, was, open. Do, yeah, open, BBS yeah. was 166. I think uh, Suicide Squad was like over 130. Something okay. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, man, that's a healthy. That's a healthy start, regardless. Um, Catherine Bigelow mm -hmm. in 2010 uh, became the first woman to win the Oscar for the Hurt Locker. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you got these. Now you got. And now after that, you got the Fifty Shades director. Mm -hmm. Now you got Patty Jenkins. Now. Okay. Will Hollywood start taking women more seriously as filmmakers? I would think so. But then it's Hollywood. <laughs> well, the answer is what? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's Hollywood. You know, you know what? Um, it's, everything's copycat, right? If somebody does well, then they'll continue to do it because they feel like that is the mat, that is the formula to make money, right? Football does it. Uh, sports teams do it. Uh, movies have done it when, like I said, comic book movies. Oh, a comic book movie made some more money. Let's make more comic book movies. Westerns came out. Oh, this Western came out. It made some money. Let's make some more Westerns. So it's just what they do in the in the industry. It was like, let's figure out what a formula is to make money and let's just copy it and do it ourselves. So, but I don't think that like it should be hiring women. Yes. <laughs> but I think that it should be. Uh, but will they get paid? Equal. Yeah, equally, right. <laughs> but I. Hey, you know what? Sandra Bullock. That's all I gotta say. Sandra Bullock in Gravity. She took like I think it was like a real uh, like a ten million or something like that. She did. For the movie and then she got yeah, like the, the grosses and she made 60 million off that one movie so hey pay attention to Sandra Bullock but um, I think that it doesn't matter whether or not they're, they're they're women or not it's just their their quality of work that they want to put out that <laughs> put out this way but uh, but the quality of work <laughs> that, that they want to bring to the table where they're true to the content and I think that's the most important I think that that's what uh, Jenkins did with the with uh, Wonder Woman is that she was true to the content. Yeah. You know, and uh, it, it had way more than I thought she was going to be to us. Like, I thought it was like, oh, it's going to be director. They're going to want to put in their own vision. But she was so true to what comic book was. They, like you said, you asked me about like uh, all the Easter eggs and stuff like that. I didn't realize that they were going to put it. And she didn't get tied so much to trying to stay and bring in all this other references to the DCEU. So, I think she did a great job and I would love to see what she does as a second film even though she don't want to do it and any other woman who actually has a, a real good pedigree or at least a really good idea and can bring something to a movie that we haven't seen yet. So. I think I think mm -hmm. that as long as um, you know the uh, film, the female filmmakers out there, that as long as they um, continue pushing and and they and they don't stop and they keep going, they'll get these opportunities. And and um, you're gonna you're gonna find more and more. And and you know what? It, to something like that you said right now about about the um, they were already established. Fifty Shades was established. Mm -hmm. One of yeah. was established. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's to say that they're not going to give them something else? Yeah. That's a different, a different yeah, female director. They're, they're going to make my Black Widow movie sooner or later. 
Uh, give it to Gotham <laughs> City Sirens yeah, instead of giving go. it to David Ayers or whoever. Give it to freaking give it to somebody. Let's see what uh, let's see that uh, that happened. That would be awesome. I think that that's, that, that's, I think that's exactly what needs to happen. So we'll see what happens. Ladies, we love you. So <laughs> good luck. All right. Controversial news. Okay. Controversial news. Comedian Bill Maher. Yes. Uh, on uh, Real Time with Bill Maher, HBO Bill Maher. show, uh, very uh, you know political based show, very funny, very insightful. It's great. He was actually uh, uh, conversing with uh, Senator uh, Ben Sassy or Ben Sass or something. Ben, ben Sassy. Ben Sassy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they were having a conversation mm -hmm. uh, that that. Um, where Bill Maher actually started referencing slavery, mm -hmm. and he called himself a house N-word. Wow, it's crazy. Now, it was a cringeworthy statement. I mean, he does, I he does like, sleep with black women, so, you know, maybe he kind of gets that pass. <laughs> but it was, no, it, I mean, I heard it, it was really cringeworthy. I didn't want to, like, ooh, you know, kind of didn't want to go there, but, you know, we got, we got, we got to talk about it. Okay. Tell me what you think about that whole thing in the first place. As a black man, I don't even say it that often, unless I'm quoting a line. But I don't run around calling people that. So I mean, just you, if you're not even black, you don't get to say it. It's just that's the rule. It's kind of the rule. Well, which one's the rule? Though? The, the the G A R or the double G A? You guys, look, don't. <laughs> that's the rule. <laughs> don't. We don't even have to flirt with that line about what's acceptable. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Now, I mean, if you think, like I said, when we were first talking about this in our show prep, when we were talking about this, is that um, he probably thought it was funnier to say that than just to say slave or, you know, just to refer to slavery in general. It was funny to throw that line out because he's a comedian. You're, you're paid to be shocking and you know, like edgy, stuff like that. So I get why he did it. It just wasn't appropriate. And, and do I think Bill Maher is racist? No. You know, he just said something that was like Hogan. Know, off color and really, 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 really should have been said, uh, especially to somebody who will release that out to other people or in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a setting where it can get out. Exactly. Who knows what he says? He probably drops the N-word more than some of my family does. <laughs> behind closed doors. What's behind closed doors? Nobody knows. But when you say it to public figures like that, it's going to get out. Bill Maher, no better. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, um... The uh, the senator was actually talking about the uh, comedian, not him, but just saying the comedian having a lot more uh, leverage, That's and fine. and uh, to where the crossing the line is not as shocking. No, because that's what that's the whole thing. With comedians get to say stuff that I mean, they a lot of comedians say racist. I mean, you can, you can thank Lenny Bruce for that, but I'm a lot of comedians that. say racist stuff. But we laugh at it because it's just intended to be funny and not that they are really racist. But I mean, some they really say some things that push the edge and the boundaries. But that's in comedy shows. That's in sitcoms. Yeah. That's in in stand up. That's what that's in, you watching with it. <laughs> Hey, all the family said some edgy stuff, man. Yes, he did. All yes, the family he did. said some edgy stuff. Um, <laughs> Al Franken has dropped out of appearing. Uh, Senator Al Franken, who was actually a, a okay. writer and performer and comedian uh, for Saturday Night Live, uh, he uh, he dropped out of appearing on Bill Maher's next show. Um, HBO called it tasteless. Um, Nick Cannon busted out the N word and he got fired. He showed it. He got fired. He's so, black. So, and he's black. So how is that gonna? How, what is HBO gonna do about Bill Maher? I don't know. HBO now there's two is things. A now there's brand. Now there's two. Exactly. But there's and, there's and that's and that's what I was gonna say is hey you know what HBO might be handling different than your company did. Mm. If you would have said it on HBO, I'm pretty sure you would have still kept your job. <laughs> but saying it and wherever you said it, that's that's something else. I mean HBO is known for rated R content. Exactly. So. <laughs> Matter of fact, HBO is the one that bursted out the stand-up comedy scene where Bill Maher was doing his freaking stand-up shows and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, so, I mean, if so, they don't let him go, I'm not going to be upset about it. If right, they do exactly. let him go, I, it's going to be, if they do let him go, I'm like, well, you know, it's kind of a PC thing to do. It's like, with knowing what's all going through, I mean, we even think, look back at, um, what's his name, that uh, played uh, the neighbor in, in Seinfeld, the played the neighbor in Seinfeld. Oh, Michael Richards. Yeah, Michael Richards. He, uh, he ain't been around Yeah, and it's like... <laughs> he's a freaking pariah. <laughs> exactly. Man. So, I mean, if you look at the history of what's happened to comedians in general that, that have dropped it, I mean, that's it's not a good look for Bill Maher, and it doesn't look good for his career going forward. But 
Like I said, if they don't do anything, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna I, march, and I'm they, not gonna pick do, it. But they I, do. Have I'm to. not gonna not watch Game of Thrones. They do. Have to, they do have to do something. Though. There, there's, he's they probably, he's to probably gonna get suspended. That's exactly and, what they need to do. If they don't want to fire him, you're gonna have you to. You know, his show is probably ass. his show's probably not gonna come out next season, and then it, they'll make a return or something like that. He'll get something. Like I said, if he get if he doesn't get fired, I'm not gonna be hurt about it. But if he does, I want to understand why it happened. So, so, so what's the uh, over under as far as um, him showing up on camera without? <laughs> like South Park <laughs> kissing his butt. <laughs> All right, back to more movie news. Let's get away from this political stuff. All right, uh, Halloween return. Yes, pictures have surfaced um, uh, online uh, of the original uh, neighborhood from the 1978. Halloween. Okay, I mean, it's not like the neighborhood moved. Yeah, right. They didn't shut it down after the film was right. over. All right, all y'all, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Some houses have been evac um, evacuated. They evacuated. It's like vacated. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Some houses have been vacated. Some people are, are, they were are killed? talking about. They were killed. <laughs> some people are talking about them. Uh, you know what? They're going to use these houses as far as the. Uh, for the story, right? right okay. Uh, Bloom House is bringing this out. Uh, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride okay. are actually um, uh, involved in this movie. I can see it. Okay. Now, I, I can now, see it. it totally screams out. Now, Danny yeah. McBride uh, uh, has really kind of reinvented himself in a little bit way yeah, well, with Covenant. With yeah. Covenant. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, uh, if he has appreciation for Carpenter's classic, who Carpenter is actually, which Carpenter is actually a consultant on this, um, I think that he can bring out some good stuff on it. <laughs> He's a consultant, just like James Cameron is on yeah. Terminator films. <laughs> James Cameron is not a consultant, <laughs> forget it. Anyway, they're going to, so instead of Season of the Witch, this is the real Halloween 3. It is not, it is going to get away from all of the supernatural stuff that, that, you know. They're going to the Tokyo with Drift the, it? With the freaking triangle. They're going to Tokyo Drift it? Oh, so, man. Jamie Lloyd does it. They're going to Rocky five it. Daniel <laughs> Harris, I love you, but you're not going to be in this movie. Um, so this is going to be the real Halloween 3. Okay. Now, the 1978 version was made for over $300,000 and went on to make $70 million. With inflation, uh, it, it rounded up to $267 million that this movie has made. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Now, it's already been remade uh, with um, Rob Zombie, which the first one was decent. The second one was absolutely horrible. I had nightmares, and I couldn't fucking get out of my mood for a whole week because of Halloween 2. I, I don't even remember how It was it. horrible. I, I, I freaking hate that movie. It, it warranted that F-bomb right now. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so what do you think this will do for the slasher genre, because we have not had a damn good slasher movie in forever. The slasher movie is dead. Could Halloween return? Yeah, you know why the slasher be slashers return? I mean, this, they tried to when they tried to bring back, in, in a sense, um, with Nightmare on Elm Street, and that didn't do well. So maybe I don't. Uh, now I'm not talking about remakes. I'm no, 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 I'm talking about, about like a, with a slasher. I mean, it, they still make slasher films. They're just low budget independent films right. now. They, they, I mean, it's still made, but there's no big budget theatrical. Theatrical ones, no. movies, yeah. theatrical movies, because all of these movies made it to or Halloween. Scream was Scream Peak. was the last one we had. That's '90s. Yeah, okay. So, so Scream was the last one we had. So, um, I mean, it could. It depends on how they do it. Can they re? Can they re? Re? re, re not rejuvenate? Re? Reinvigorate? Uh, slashers. I mean, is this group um, is the is the fan base for horror right now even interested in slashers? Well, I don't. Mm. Th it, it, yeah, I mean right. because I now I really paranormal stuff is paranormal more. Yeah, it's, it's supernatural. That's you, you know, the Conjuring, yeah. Annabelle, stuff like that. That's more. Which you know, then a lot of ways. Yeah, okay, it's a little scarier, but yeah. still, you know, that is a little far fetched. Slasher movies can really happen, and if you really think about it. You know what's the last few kind of hits, right? The the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You had to bring you had to bring in freaking Leatherface to come in. You know you had to bring in. But they they try to reboot Texas Chainsaw Massacre a bunch of times. But it's funny because they, they need these old properties because no, there's no new properties that can be made with slasher films. So that's why I said this. Will this reintroduce the slasher film again? Hopefully, because hey, Michael Myers no. is the second. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna credit Norman Bates to be the, the okay. start okay. 
of slasher movies, right. and and then Halloween. Even that's, that's pretty Halloween. much that's pretty much accepted. I mean, because I mean that was a slasher film. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I would I would definitely. I mean, that. he had a creepy mom that was dead, and I mean, basically it was it's Halloween. It was it was a prequel to Halloween. And Friday the Thirteenth. Okay. Anyway, so anyway, <laughs> so look for that. That's actually starting to film already, and that's going to be coming out in uh, October of next year, two thousand eighteen. So I can't freaking wait just we'll to see, see Michael Myers back. That's we'll awesome. I think they need to come up with something new. All right, WTF News! In Vietnam, Medcare Skin Center was wondering why it's been getting all these hits and social media and being all this, getting all this attention. Well, it turns out that they're using the same logo as the Umbrella Corporation from Resident Evil. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. It's fine. They got outed. We know what the real Umbrella Corporation is now. They get Mila Jovich over there right now. Get that figured out. <laughs> they claim that they use a third party for logo design. And they fuck, they cheap. Oh my God. They stole money from them because all he did was cut and place the stupid thing on there. Hey, look, how you guys like that? How you guys like that? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, you came up with that on your own? Yeah. <laughs> Now, this is the ir- the irony of it. You know, the Umbrella Corporation, you know, they they deal with bio... Yeah, bio- and <laughs> Bioengineering. That's what makes it hilarious. Well, here's what's funny, too, is that, you know, this company is actually... Uh, it treats patients with skin ailments. Zombies! <laughs> that freaking insane? Zombies! That's so freaking Oh, my funny. God. Can we... Oh, you probably can order their work uniforms and you can... <laughs> hey, how about this? How about this? When you guys are in this meeting and you, you guys are going to look over these logos that the third party's giving you, not one of y'all have seen Resident Evil. <laughs> I bet you somebody actually had played the game. <laughs> no, the, the dudes in the back playing it. <laughs> hey, why does it look familiar? <laughs> yeah, so that's our WTF. That was freaking hilarious. That was great. That's they should, they should, hey, look, they should ride. Why are they not being sued by Capcom, by the way? <laughs> They should be getting sued by Capcom, but they should ride the wave of this and just, they should really put out like a whole bunch of skin disease pictures and stuff like that and say it's coming. Oh, <laughs> and forget, like, like, the, do all these the outbreak, the outbreak, the outbreak is, is coming. <laughs> freaking cryptic, all these cryptic freaking, yeah. Uh, well, it's not, it's like freaking not, not too long ago, the McDonald's, uh, there was a McDonald's that they launched new uniforms and uh, they all look like Imperial Guards. That's even better. <laughs> they, look like, they look like Imperial, like Imperial. I thought, you, I thought you were going to talk about coming to America with McDonald's. With McDonald's yeah. <laughs> Put up. Oh man, that's freaking hilarious. That's awesome. I like so, that. So, like Cool and the Gang, this is Ladies Night, right? Okay. We got um, uh, Wonder Woman tearing it up. Patty Jenkins tearing it up. Gal Gadot looking hot as hell. And uh, pretty soon on June 16th, we're going to have Scarlett Johansson and crew. Uh, for Rough Night, yes, which is the female Very Bad Things. If you've never seen Very Bad Things, go check out that movie. It's freaking hilarious. Mm. Anyway, so now it's time for our top five. And we're back on Flash. No substance. So today's top five is the top five female comedy-led movies. Huh? Or female-led comedy movies. <laughs> this is exactly what happened last week, where I couldn't figure out how the title was gonna go. <laughs> but regardless, we have a freaking lot now. Comedy is, you know, in general, always you know male-dominated. But the ladies, they got they got funny bones too. Yeah. So Terrence, go first. All right. And give All me right. your funny bone. All right. So. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's a different show. That is a different show. All right, so uh, I, I was realizing that uh, I need to get caught up on a lot more recent uh, female-led comedies because there's a whole bunch of ones that I miss. So obviously all the new stuff, not on my list. Old stuff it is on my list. <laughs> Number five. Number five. And I don't know why I love this movie so much because it's not anybody's favorite, but it's it's my it's one of my favorites. I will watch when it does come on randomly. Uh, is uh, House Bunny. House Bunny. That's I, good movie. I love that movie. That movie. That movie is cute. It's funny because she is. She knows cute how to play. Funny. Yeah. Well, yeah, she's cute and funny. <laughs> Way more cute and funny. But uh, the uh, she knows how to play a ditzy character really, really well. And I, I thought that movie was was. I mean, to me, it was the it was the um, the adult version of Legally Blonde. <laughs> True, I guess. Yeah, so I, I, I love it. I, it was Cat uh, Dennings. It was uh, just to have Cat. It Dennings. was Neighbors before Neighbors. It was Legally Blonde after Legally Blonde. <laughs> it was Legally Blonde after Legally after Blonde. Legally okay, blonde. just checking. <laughs> no, no more. more. Sister Act. 
Good one. Good I, one. That would be great one. Great in this film. It was like this. This is one of the ones I that really because I wasn't really into it with Jumping Jack Flash, uh, but Sister Act. This was the movie. This was the movie. I as a kid, I watched this movie every week. I would go to other people's houses. They would have it on. I'd sit there and watch it there. The jokes never got old to me until she did Sister Act 2. But Sister Act 1! <laughs> but Lauren Hill was good in that movie. Yeah. And so was, and so was Jeffrey Lopez. Sister Act 1! <laughs> Harvey <laughs> Keitel! Where was that? <laughs> Sister Act 1. We'll be come back and do Sister Act 3. No. No! Hey look, they're bringing, they're bringing, uh, they're bringing... No! Number 3! <laughs> they're bringing Eddie back. <laughs> for triplets. <laughs> or they're bringing Eddie for triplets. Oh, she can come man. back. For, that's her own franchise anyway. So Eddie coming back for Beverly Hills Cop? Nah, we don't know yet. Maybe. Come back. Look, if Arnold Schwarzenegger can come back for franchises, if Sylvester Stallone can come back for franchises, Whoopi can come back. Right. Come on, Whoopi. Come on, Whoopi. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Number three. A League of Their Own. A League of Their Own. Very good movie. A League of Their Own. Very good movie. Gina Davis. Gina Davis did a great job. And uh, and for people who say this was was uh, Tom Hanks movie, you're wrong because it was a Gina Davis film. This film was totally led by her. Directed by Penny Marshall. Directed by Penny Marshall. There. Where's Penny Marshall getting right. her movie? <laughs> Where's Penny Marshall getting her directing thing? Let her direct Batgirl. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this was great. I'm a big fan of baseball, and especially when they do movies that reference like old, old timey baseball. Love these particular movies. Uh, so you're just, so, you're horrible at names. I will buy you a beer if you tell me the name of their their uh, their team. I don't remember, but John Lovitz was in this film. I remember. Yeah, <laughs> I still have that. John Lovitz was in this still film. Had that five dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The Rutford Peaches. Ah, there it is. That's, that's, that's an old timey name. All right. <laughs> Number two. No, it's. Was it two or one? No, that's, uh, that was five, four, three. <gasps> oh my God. I said that. I said, <laughs> it's my number two now. I said it out of order. <laughs> number one. No, it's my number two. Number two. Number two. <laughs> number two. Which really should be my number three. But it's my number two now. <laughs> is, uh, God, I'm so messed up here. Number two. <laughs> Rowing Michelle's High School Reunion. I love this film. Uh, and yet, Mira Salvino and uh, the girl from Lisa Friends. Lisa Kudrow. Thank you, Lisa Kudrow. <laughs> I said the girl from Friends. <laughs> All right, so funny together. And they never, I mean, well, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Kudrow did, you know, Friends and stuff like that. So she was always been like the funny Disney person, but Mira Salvino? <laughs> I did. I didn't. She caught me up, girl. Yeah, it was like I love this movie, and it was like them t together on screen. It was. I love the poster. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> it was. It was. Dude, where my? Uh, it was. Dude, where my, my car? car. <laughs> but I love. I love their interaction. Girl, my bag? Is there you go. go. <laughs> I love their interaction together on screen. I never really gave Mira Savino that type of credit to do comedy. When she did it, I was really impressed with her. And it's one of those films where like, they're just. They're just funny and it's not just like oh it's just women doing comedy it was, it was just funny together right. all right all right so that brings me to my number one which is actually my number one <laughs> bridesmaids bridesmaids hilarious movie hilarious film and it's full of women full of women as a matter of fact there's i very few men in this film i maybe they were waiters or something but <laughs> but the film <laughs> the, the film seemed like it branched out people to do their own comedy. I mean, this was a big role for uh, what's your name from Saturday Night Live, and uh, it was actually a big role for uh, for Christian Wiig, yes, but yeah, for uh, for Melissa. Michelle McCarthy, yeah. and it's the one that made her a star. Yes, yeah, so, so people branched off from this. Oh one. yeah, absolutely. So, um, I don't think they should ever do a sequel. I think it was one of those films where it should stay. One and done. Yeah, just alone. that because you know they will. I mean, look how they look how they milk the Hangover. Well, that came out in in two thousand what eleven. Yeah, and they, we haven't seen nothing since. So I mean, like, like hey, we we didn't see a sequel to Dumb and Dumber either until they did it like thirty oh, years later. Years and I got to do it. Forget. Who says they won't? All right. Who says they won't? They're doing triplets. All right. They're doing triplets. <laughs> <laughs> that's my top five. Well, my number five is also Bridesmaids. <laughs> that movie was that's a number five. That's my number five. It what is on your list? <laughs> it's a it's a actual it's an absolute great uh, ensemble female ensemble. All the ladies did a great job. But Maya Rudolph, I just love Maya Rudolph in, in anything she does. So, mm -hmm. um, but uh, Melissa McCarthy, I thought she was over the top at times, and I, she McCarthy'd up too much. But yeah, I, before it was McCarthy'd up. 
but <laughs> but Kristen Wiig really was just the, the the saving grace of that movie. I love I loved her in that movie. So yeah, that's my number. Wait five. wait wait. It was Ghostbusters before Ghostbusters. Yeah, it was Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> this one this but this movie they wanted to see. Aw. <laughs> number four, Bad Moms. I haven't seen it. That movie is freaking hilarious, man. Catherine Hahn is just. Have you ever seen The Goods? Like the movie The Goods. Yes, where Catherine Hahn is trying to get with the uh, Rob Riggle. Yeah, Rob Riggle's actually ten years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the way she is in that, she takes it to a whole other level in this freaking movie, <laughs> and it is just awesome. Um, and Mila Kunis, you know, uh, she she was in Ted, and you know, she did these supporting roles and all that. This is the first go around where she's actually the straight up star of the movie. Okay. You know, uh, she was in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Uh, I but mean, she was kind of like second. She, she was the star of the movie with her and Channing Tatum. And that sci-fi let's film not, that Let's not saw. ever bring that Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> Jupiter Ascending, because that descended fast in box on us. But Bad Moms was freaking hilarious. Straight up. But she does comedy, too. She does Meg. Number three. Number three. For me. You've never seen this, but Outrageous Fortune. I've talked about this a couple shows ago. Outrageous Fortune with Bette Midler and Shelley Long. With, oh, yeah, a special no, with a special appearance by freaking George Carlin. That movie is so damn funny. And if you've never seen it, and you millennials out there, if you've never seen it, Check that movie out. Bette Midler is so freaking hilarious in that movie. It, it's, it's awesome. Number two, you said Sister Act. I go Jumpin' Jack Flash over Sister no! Act all day long. No! <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg was, that was her first real movie, like, you know, where she wasn't getting beat by Danny Glover. And <laughs> Jumpin' Jack Flash was freaking hilarious, man. Sister Act. I don't know how. I mean, <laughs> I love Sister Act. Sister Act, I saw at the theater. I see that movie all the time too. But Jumpin' Jack Flash is just my favorite Whoopi Goldberg movie. It's okay. I just thought it's just. It's I just okay. think it's funny. It's I just okay. think it's funny. It's funny. It's and she okay. goes undercover and she's. It was okay. <laughs> I, I love that movie. Number one. Number one. In my opinion. In my opinion. The one that started it all. In my opinion. And that's Nine to Five. <laughs> nine to Five. Jane Fonda. Lily Tomlin, Dolly Parton, and, and and them having to deal with Dabney Coleman as a chauvinistic boss. I felt like the sex and was, lying hypocritical. I felt like bigot. I was too young for that movie when it came out. So I then you just made me feel that whole yeah. stuff. <laughs> He's only a few old years older than me. But I felt like when that movie came out, I was still a little kid, and I, like I didn't have the type of it didn't hit me the way it hit you. Well, it's because <laughs> I, I used to watch it all the freaking time, and it still sucks. It, it still sucks. Yeah, it's it still, sucks that I don't even fucking own this movie. I'm horrible, but every time it comes out, I DVR the shit and I leave it on there. Do you get Dolly in her prime? You get Dolly in her prime, that's right. Yeah. Jeez, forget <laughs> it. <laughs> Airbags before airbags. Forget there it. There you go. <clears throat> Honorable mentions. Honorable sir. mentions. All right, so obviously, you know, we'll, no, I'm not, because I, I, it, it really didn't move me that way. But we're going to go, uh, unfortunately, there are some cultural impact ones, because I put the ones I really like, that I haven't seen, but you see so many clips of them, you feel like you've seen a film. So like clueless, like um, uh, Megan Levy's trailer. <laughs> yes, you've seen that movie. You've seen the trailer. But stuff like clueless, stuff like me. You've Girls. never seen clueless. I've, I've, I've seen I've seen the driving scene. I've seen all the little ditzy parts that she has in it. But I've never sat down and watched it from beginning. Just like you haven't seen Top Gun. <laughs> okay. uh, mean Girls. Another one where it's like you you've never hear, seen Mean Girls. All the you hear all the lines. The movies quote it so much that I don't have to see it because I know all this funny stuff that happens in the movie. <laughs> well, go fetch. It's so fetch. <sighs> Hope my daughters don't grow up to be like that. Mm. I, I mean, I guess. Uh, and my last one would probably be Trainwreck. Trainwreck. That's because a good movie. Haven't seen it. I haven't seen I, it. It was funny. I thought it was funny. I haven't seen Ashman it. Ashman hates it, but I thought it was funny. But I've seen so many clips of this movie. I felt like I've seen it. <laughs> My honorable mentions, Adventures in Babysitting. <gasps> I forgot that one. She did leave that movie. Yeah, Elizabeth that's, Shue, man. That is, that is on she my list. She was like, <laughs> she was like, at the at the freaking like right after Karate Kid, and I was all in love with Elizabeth Shue, mm -hmm. and this one was just like, I wanted to be the shoehorn. Adventures in Babysitting. <laughs> Ferris Bueller, right after Ferris Bueller. <laughs> League of Their Own. I had that one. Clueless. I had Romeo and Michelle also. Uh, I, I did like Heather's. Winona I, Ryder. I, I, I never saw Winona Heather's. Ryder was really good in Heather's. Uh, the Heather's. Sweetest Thing. Christina Applegate. In Love You. Never she was amazing things. and freaking The Sweetest Thing. And by the way, I keep saying I haven't seen it. I don't hate women in films. <laughs> it's just, I haven't seen these <laughs> movies. And he wants to kick all the uh, women, female Guardians of the Galaxy in the next Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> I just said replace them with other women. 
Sister Act. Sister Act was also uh, was also mine. The Heat with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy. I tried to watch it. I didn't like that movie. That movie was funny. I, I didn't like that movie. Hilarious. I didn't but like I that more, movie. I, I didn't like. like I, did, I was done with Melissa McCarthy by then. I like Sandra I, Bullock more than I liked the Melissa. Oh man! Another one was uh um uh, um uh, 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 we were talking about Sandra Bullock was uh um. Uh, Miss Congeniality. I do like that film. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. That, that was, was a good one. one. Mm. Um, uh, and, and last but not least, Mrs. Beautiful Goldie Hawn. Overboard. Private Benjamin. And oh, Overboard, okay. too. But, but Private know. Benjamin. Mm. Man, my mom was in the service back in the day, and uh, dude, I used to always watch that damn movie. I was like, <laughs> I thought I was in the freaking army. That's how much my, my mom made me watch that damn movie. But that's for you, ladies. We love you. And, uh,. We should have done this in, Mo in Mother's Day, but we, we probably should have. We should have done some Mother's I mean, but That's these, right. these are our mother's movies. These are mother's movies. <laughs> you know, Bad Moms ain't. Well, Bad Moms is. That's the only mother movie on here. <laughs> Thanks. Take us home. All right. That was another one of our, or at least one of my kind of uh, all over the places. Top yeah. Five yeah. The, yeah. You uh, can throw it now. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So uh, make sure you guys uh, like and comment. Tell us about your top five list. Obviously, I forgot a bunch. Adventures of Babysitting. I don't know how I forgot that one. As many times as I watched that film. The um, But make sure you put your uh, top five in the list below so that way we can kind of make an amalgamation of what we got and some all the new ones that obviously me and him quite haven't seen all. But uh, I've I seen them put them in. The, they're probably the Top Gun. <laughs> they're probably just as funny as these older ones that we have on our list. Uh, and as always, make sure you subscribe so that way you know about upcoming things that are coming out. Like I said, we're back on a roll. We're moving. We're going. It's consistent. The uh, <laughs> except hosts, that's not consistent. Yeah, that's just never consistent here. Uh, but you need to know. You need to subscribe right. so that way you uh, you know when these All things come right. out. And a little special bonus, red ink. All right. <laughs> This is a, for this is completely on our, our, our good buddy here. Jeepers Creepers, uh, it's part three, not part, part four. four. Yeah, I, I screwed it up in the graphic. I realized it afterwards, and it was too late. It was already there, and I was like, I can't fix that now. Unless I like drew over it. <laughs> the, star, the, the star of Jeepers Creepers is Justin Long. Yeah, I know. I forgot to put his name in the credit. I, I thought about it after the show. <laughs> From waiting. And it's, it's so funny that you said Romeo and Michelle was your, your one of your favorites. Uh -huh. uh, and but you said. Um, you said somebody else actually was the star of it, not Mira Sorvino. I cannot remember who you said was the star of Romeo and Michelle, but it was not Mira Sorvino. What you are said, we talking about? You said somebody else. Last, uh, right now, in your top five, you said... I said Mira Sorvino. Right. But in the previous show, you said somebody else starred in Romeo and Michelle. I thought it was hilarious. What was that? I don't remember. We're anyway. not talking about Romeo and Michelle's wedding. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you Michelle's wedding. You Romeo mentioned Michelle's it. Wedding. Hey, hey, forget it. Why bring it up? I'm an idiot. Yeah, no, All right, I, I so... Uh, Olivia Munn played Psylocke, not Jessica Munn. Who said Jessica Munn? You I did! Did I say Jessica Munn? Yes. I want to see the video on that. I don't remember doing that. And finally, of course, you you and you put it in the graphic, so I'll, I'll give you a forgiveness on that, but Keira Knightley did play a yeah. little bit. Oh, we, we totally forgot. Yeah, that one. We yes. totally forgot about it. We were like, who's it? Some, some English girl. <laughs> some English girl. And finally, Sticky Fingers actually did play Blade in the TV series. Oh, no, no, I, I changed it to Fred Ostar. But, but it was it was sticky actually fingers. Sticky Fingers. <laughs> uh, under Kirk Jones. Under Kirk Jones. Okay. His name was Kirk Jones in that movie. <laughs> Kirk Jones. That's who it was. All right. For Aspen, who is not here because she's ditching us again. <laughs> but she's a, she's a high school graduate now. Yeah, so shout out to my little baby girl for graduating high school. And uh, shout out to my son who just turned four and uh, gave the doctor a hard time today. It was freaking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Manny. I'm Terrence. And that was the goods. <laughs> I cannot remember who you said fucking Romeo and Michelle, dude. You fucking said remember, something. I don't remember what episode that was. This last one. And we talked about Romeo and Michelle? Yes.